Hello, my friends. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation. Do you have alumophobia? I know that's a made up word. But the reason I wanted to uh, talk about that today with you is because, again, where these crazy stories come up in our industry. And I think a lot of times the reason we get caught up in these big questions is because we just simply don't know, because no one ever took the time to tell us or to share with us the actual facts. So here's the question. Um, someone contacted me and said, look, I'm using an aluminum whisk to mix my colors and my bleach. And someone was then an educator the other day, and they said, oh, you can't do that. You'll have a chemical reaction. And so my question to you is, can aluminum create a chemical reaction with hair color? And if you really think about it, you have to really think about it, is that the answer would be absolutely not. Now, I know I don't expect you to believe me, so what I want to do is I'm going to take time to explain to you a little bit about aluminum. I know you use it when you do foils, and a little many people say it's no big deal. You know, they don't even question that, but there are some who do. So let's really, let's go to school, and let's talk about aluminum itself. So here's the first thing I think is important for us to be aware of is that even though aluminum is categorized in the metal family, it's important that we know it's really not actually a metal. It's considered what they call an alloy. In order for a chemical reaction to occur between metals and the chemicals that we use, the metal must be able to rust. And aluminum, because of the way that it is made, does not rust. It will corrode but it doesn't rust. Aluminum does not rust. It will corrode. It's considered an alloy that's derived from a mineral called bauxite. This is what bauxite looks like. And here is the definition of bauxite. It is a naturally occurring heterogeneous material composed primarily of one or more aluminum hydroxide minerals plus various mixtures of silica, iron oxide, titania, aluminum silicate, and other impurities in the minor or trace amounts. So as they mine bauxite, which is what they make aluminum out of, there are trace minerals that, you know, that do have metals in them, but they're very, very small amounts. So aluminum is graded on its purity. So too many metals in, a, in an aluminum product could cause problems. <clears throat> but with the aluminum we're speaking to, it's impossible to do that because people are eating with aluminum-coated uh, tools. They're mixing, they're cooking foods in commercial kitchens. You know, so, so we don't even have to deal with that today in 2022. Paradoxically, aluminum oxidation is a central part of its corrosion resistance. So when aluminum oxidizes, it ha and it has a very high affinity to oxygen. And oxygen, is, of course, is the air around us. When a new aluminum surface is exposed in the presence of air or any other oxidizing agent, it quickly develops a thin, hard film of what we call aluminum oxide or hydrated, ox or hydrated oxide in a non-stagnant water. And this is a protective coating even on untreated aluminum, it is just the part of chemistry that happens. As I pass it through the air, as I expose it to the air, it immediately develops this thin, hard layer of aluminum oxide, which helps to prevent it from being affected by chemicals. This is before you coat it or do anything. This aluminum oxidation is precisely what makes aluminum so corrosion resistant. So it is resistant to corrosion. Do you realize that 85% of the aluminum that was originally used the first time around is still being done because it's recyclable? And so it, it has a life of, it's almost in eternity in the, based on the purity of the aluminum, especially with the existence of carbonate, which is a salt of carbonic acid. So acid is aluminum's real big enemy more than anything else. Aluminum oxide coating is highly resistant 
to corrosion. So aluminum oxide is created just simply by passing a piece of raw aluminum through the air. This surface film is generally stable in a pH range of 4, 5 to 8. So it's really a pretty moderate pH, okay? And that, that's where it is. The film can stay stable in other cases depending on the environment. For example, nitric acid, which has a pH of 0, highly caustic, or glacial aesthetic acid, a pH of 3, or ammonium hydroxide, all the way to the other end of the scale, at a pH of 13. But we're putting it in hair color, a pH of 9.5 to 10, and we're leaving, we're using it to mix. We're, how long is it in there? A couple of minutes? That's all. So I think we become, we start overthinking it because we consider it a metal, but it's not really a metal. It's kind of a hybrid, if you will. And finally, most aluminum products have either a clear coat. Most of them have a clear coat. Uh, or they're using some other coating to, pr to protect because it's used in such so much in commercially. So you can paint it. You can, uh, you can powder coat it. You can do a multitude of things to it to increase its resistance to corrosion and anything like that and to a chemical reaction. There are, however, different grades of aluminum based on the purity. And those go from <coughs> the aluminum we use commercially in our homes and in restaurants to the aluminum they use on airplane wings. Two different, you know, two different grades of aluminum that are being used. The grade that works best for what we use it for is something called grade 1100. It's the most popular grade for commercial and home use. So, relax. Think about how many utensils you have in your kitchen or how many different aluminum type of products you have eaten out of, you have drank things out of, and you've never thought, had a second thought about it. Aluminum bowls. The aluminum... Go to, did you go to any picnics where people bring their food in these aluminum uh, tubs, trays? Or aluminum foil. We use it every day in the salon. We don't get a chemical reaction there. So I think you should just relax. Don't overthink it. And just realize that we're using a different type of product today than we did years ago. And so... The story about chemical reactions with metals that we use has long since gone away. I mean, same thing with hair clips, the metal clippies. You're not going to get a reaction with those. Most of those are made from aluminum. And they're coated. Even if they're made from aluminum, they're coating. So stop, stop, stop with all these stories. We simply make people who don't understand more nervous about it. So, as I always say, learn what you don't know. That's important because that's going to help you excel in this industry. And if you want to get a head start on it, I recommend you check out my book, Captain Color vs. the Pigment Pirates. You can find it on DorianBookstore.com. You can find it on Amazon.com. You can find it on BarnesandNoble.com. And uh, it's a great resource, a great handbook for today's modern hair colorist. Tons of information from beginning to end, and I think you really would enjoy it. So think about it, get a book, research it. One thing I've always learned from my mentor is that when you show or tell people the why, it makes it so much easier for them to understand. So hopefully I've done that for you today. As always, I enjoyed having you here, and I thank you so much for listening. And I wish you the best experience in your hair coloring business. Have a wonderful holiday season. From my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.